Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be going into Unit 2, Topic 9, Sleeping and Dreaming. This is the last topic review video of Unit 2 of AP Psychology. Now, of course, this isn't the last review video, though, for Unit 2. There's also the Unit 2 summary video that'll cover all the important information in Unit 2. Plus, there's the ultimate review packet that comes with practice quizzes, worksheets, and more practice on all the different concepts in this unit. You'll want to make sure you check that out in the description of this video. But first, let's go over sleeping and dreaming. So when you sleep, you go through different stages. Your body has a circadian rhythm. It's your body's biological clock. This biological clock involves changing your blood pressure, internal temperature, and hormones. The circadian rhythm is what regulates your sleep and wake cycle, and it repeats every 24 hours. Have you ever heard it's bad for you to watch TV right before bed or to stare at your phone when you're trying to sleep? Well, that's because the light from your room, the phone, or also that TV can affect your circadian clock. Remember back to our Unit 2, Topic 2 review video when we talked about the pineal gland. The pineal gland produces the sleepy hormone known as melatonin. Well, there are light-sensitive retinal proteins that trigger the brain's suprachiasmatic nucleus to tell the pineal gland to decrease the melatonin in the morning and increase it in the evening. So when you're staring at your phone or the TV or hanging out in a well-lit room, you might be disrupting your internal clock and making it more difficult for you to fall asleep, which can cause you to get less sleep, which, let's face it, no one really wants. Sleep is extremely important. It has a variety of important functions that help us be healthy and happy. It allows our memory to consolidate, which allows us to be able to learn and remember new information. If you remember from the video 2.6, we talked about how memories are made in the hippocampus, and during sleep, our memories are shifted into the cortex for permanent storage. So sleep helps us with memory, but that's not all sleep does. It also facilitates growth. When you sleep, the pituitary gland releases growth hormones. When we are asleep, our bodies are also conserving energy, repairing brain tissue, and strengthening our immune system. Without sleep, we would not be able to function. The different reasons on why we can sleep can be broken down into a couple different theories. The first is the restoration theory, which looks at how our bodies get tired from our daily activities and depletes our resources and energy. Sleep is the necessary component that restores our energy and also resources. The adaptive theory looks at how sleep protects us. It approaches sleep from an evolutionary approach. By sleeping during parts of the day where there is a little action and movement, it allows us to preserve our energy so that we can use it when it is needed. Information processing theory looks at how sleep allows us to build and restore our memory. When we are in REM, our memories consolidate, which allows us to remember the vast amount of information that our brains take in every day. This is why when you're sleep deprived, you'll struggle to remember new information or even recall information that you already know. All right, so I mentioned REM, which stands for rapid eye movement and stages of sleep earlier in this video. When you go through sleep, it's roughly a 90 minute sleep cycle and it can be visualized on EEG, an imaging technique we talked about in our unit two topic seven video. The first stage is non-rapid eye movement, stage one. This is very light sleep. It only lasts around five to 10 minutes. During this stage, your body will start to relax. Your mind will start to slow down. This is a very light sleep and it's easy to wake up from. If you wake up during this stage, you'll not feel that groggy or foggy. This is why when you take a power nap, you'll want to try and limit to about 15 minutes or so. That'll allow you to wake up feeling rested. During this stage, your brain emits alpha waves. Here you also might experience hypnagogic sensations, which are sensations that might feel very real to you. For example, have you ever had that feeling that you're falling only to be jerked away? Sometimes these are known also as sleep hallucinations. Now before we continue, I want to give a quick summary about the different brain waves that your brain emits. The brain is an electrochemical organ, meaning it has electrical signals. When using an EEG, we can measure the frequency, which is the number of waves per second, and the amplitude, which is the size of the wave. When you are active and engaged in mental activities, your brain generates beta waves. These are low amplitude and are the fastest of all the brain waves. The next brain wave is alpha waves. These are slower waves that have a high amplitude. These occur when you are feeling relaxed. Here the brain is idle and you don't have to focus on anything in particular. There are also theta waves. These are greater in amplitude compared to beta and alpha waves and even slower in frequency. Theta waves help with memory, emotions, and sensations. They are strong during meditation, times of internal focus, and periods of relaxation. Theta waves are also connected to creativity, intuition, and daydreaming. Lastly, we have delta waves. These these waves have the greatest amplitude and are also the slowest frequency. This is when you're in a dreamless sleep. This is when you're the most relaxed and most often at your deepest levels of sleep. These different brain waves happen during different parts of the sleep cycle. So moving from non-REM stage one to non-REM stage two, we can see we have a transitional stage. This stage normally lasts around 10, 20 minutes. You're no longer easily woken during this stage and your brain starts to emit theta waves. This stage is characterized by the occurrence of K-complexes and sleep spindles, which are 
bursts of neural activity. Eventually you move into non-REM stage three, which is the deepest state of sleep. If you're woken up during this stage, you will feel kind of foggy and a little bit groggy. During this stage, your body will produce growth hormones. When looking at an EEG, this is when you'll start to notice more delta waves, as your body is now very relaxed. Stage three is also when you might experience sleepwalking, night terrors, or sleep talking. This stage lasts about 30 minutes. From there, you briefly go back to non-REM stage two, and then you go into REM for about 10 minutes. REM is the last stage. It stands for rapid eye movement. During REM, your external muscles are paralyzed, while your internal muscles and structures become active. This is because your brain starts to emit beta waves during this stage. This is when you might experience dreams or nightmares. During this stage, your brain is very active. Your body temperature starts to increase, your heart rate increases as well, and this stage is often known as a paradoxical sleep, because the beta waves that are found in this stage are often found when you are awake. Speaking of dreams, we should also talk about a couple of the dream theories. Sigmund Freud believed that dreams were how we understood the unconscious mind. He believed that dreams allowed us to understand the content that we could not face in our conscious state. We could look at the activation synthesis model, which suggests that dreams are our brain trying to make sense of random neural activity that's happening. This model believes that dreams are created due to the cortex interpreting the random and neural activity that's rising from the pond. Another theory about dreams is the cognitive development theory. This theory hypothesizes that dreams are a reflection of our cognitive development, so the dreams of children are more simple than adults. Dreams will also reflect the dreamer's personality and life. The neural activation theory is that specific areas of the brain are activated, and depending on which area, your dreams will have different content. The last theory is that the physiological function is why we dream, so we dream to get stimulation of our neural pathways, which will grow and preserve them. Now, while it is true that everyone around the world needs sleep, unfortunately for many people, they're just not able to get enough sleep. Sometimes life gets in the way, and other times an individual might be sleep deprived due to a sleep disorder. Lack of sleep increases the risk of depression, can make you gain weight, and affect our physical health by suppressing immune cells. And of course, there's more. One of the most common sleep disorders is insomnia. This is when you have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. This might happen for a variety of reasons. It could be an individual stressed, in pain, has different medication, or has an irregular sleep schedule. To counter insomnia, individuals can work on creating good sleeping habits and stress management. Some people also struggle with sleep tears or night tears. This is when an individual will experience intense fear and screaming while asleep. They may also talk incoherently and have their heart rate double and breathing rate double. Sleep tears can be caused by sleep deprivation, disrupted sleep schedules, or by an over arousal of the central nervous system during an individual's sleep, or could even be caused by anxiety. These mostly occur in children and they don't normally wake up during these episodes or even remember them. So we also have sleep walking and also sleep talking. These disorders also mostly affect children. Sleep walking is happening during non-REM stage three, while sleep talking can happen at any time. A person who is sleepwalking may get up and do normal waking activities while asleep, and most do not remember anything the next morning. Lastly, while it's not common, another sleep disorder that may cause an individual to become sleep deprived is narcolepsy. This is when a person uncontrollably falls asleep. Individuals with narcolepsy may struggle to go asleep at night, but uncontrollably fall asleep during the day. A person during a narcoleptic attack will immediately enter REM sleep without going through the normal stages of sleep. This is a rare sleeping disorder, but it does happen. This is caused by genetics and can be treated with medication and a strong support system. And just like that, we're done with another topic review video and another unit of AP Psychology. Now you know the drill, answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comments section below. Also, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and dropping a like on the video. Don't forget too, if you wanna get an A in your class and a five on the national exam, check out my Discord server and the Ultimate Review Packet. The Ultimate Review Packet has worksheets, practice quizzes, study guides, answer keys, practice tests, and much more for all the units of AP Psychology. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.